Tene Brahma Hidaya Adikavaye Muyantiya Tsuraya Tene Brahma Hidaya Adikavaye Muyantiya Tsuraya Tejo Vari Madam Yata Vini Mayo Yatra Tisargo Mesha Tejo Vari Madam Yata Vini Mayo Yatra Tisargo Mesha Damna Svena Sada Nirasta Kuhakam Satyam Param Dimahi Damna Svena Sada Nirasta Kuhakam Satyam Param Dimahi O my Lord Shri Krishna, son of Vasudeva. O my Lord Shri Krishna, son of Vasudeva. O all-pervading personality of Godhead. O all-pervading personality of Godhead. I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I meditate upon Lord Shri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. I meditate upon Lord Shri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. And the primeval cause of all causes. And the primeval cause of all causes. Of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universes. Of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universes. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. He is directly and directly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. And he's independent because there's no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. It's he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. The original living being. The original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations. Of water seen on fire or land seen on water. Water seen the fire of land seen the water. Only because of him do the material universes. Only because of him do the material universes. Temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature. Temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature. Appear factual although they are unreal. Appear factual although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna. I therefore meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna. Who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode. Who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode. Which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world. Which is forever free from the illusory representation of the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma Projita Kaitra Votra. Dharma Projita Kaitra Votra. Paramo Nirmatsaranam Satam. Paramo Nirmatsaranam Satam. Vedyam Vastavam Atra Vastu. Vedyam Vastavam Atra Vastu. Shivadam Tapa Atrayon Mulanam. Shivadam Tapa Atrayon Mulanam. Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite. Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite. Kimba Parir Ishwaraha. Kimba Parir Ishwaraha. Sadyur Hridi Avarudhyate Tra. Sadyur Hridi Avarudhyate Tra. Krite Bihi Susu Subhistakshana. Krite Bihi Susu Subhistakshana. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. Completely rejecting all religious activities with material motivation. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth. Which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. Which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. The highest truth is the reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity. It's sufficient in itself for God realization. It's sufficient in itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? What is the need of the other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam. As soon as one attentively and submissively Hears the message of Bhagavatam. By this culture of knowledge, by this culture of knowledge, the Supreme Lord is established within his heart. The Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama kapatarur galitam falam. Nigama kapatarur galitam falam. Sukumukad amrita dravya samyutam. Sukumukad amrita dravya samyutam. Pibata Bhagavatam rasam alayam. Pibata Bhagavatam rasam alayam. Muhur aho rasika bhuvi bhavuka. Muhur aho rasika bhuvi bhavuka. O expert and thoughtful men, relish Srimad Bhagavatam. O expert and thoughtful men, relish Srimad Bhagavatam. The mature fruit of the desire to read Vedic literatures. The mature fruit of the desire to read Vedic literatures. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadev Goswami. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadev Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Although its nectarine juice was already relishable for all. Although its nectarine juice was already relishable for all. Including liberated souls. Including liberated souls. 
Shinvatam Swakata Krishna, Shinvatam Swakata Krishna, Punya Shravana Kirtana, Punya Shravana Kirtana, Vidyantak Stohi Padrani, Vidyantak Stohi Padrani, Vidu Nati Suhit Satam, Vidu Nati Suhit Satam, to hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures. To hear about Krishna from very glorious. Or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita. Or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita. Is it self righteous activity? It is self righteous activity. And for one who hears about Krishna. And for one who hears about Krishna. Lord Krishna is dwelling within everyone's heart. Lord Krishna is dwelling within everyone's heart. Acts as a best wishing friend. Acts as a best wishing friend. And purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. And purifies the body who is constantly engaged in hearing. Nasta preesu bhadresu. Nasta preesu bhadresu. Nityam bhagavata sevaya. Nityam bhagavata sevaya. Bhagavati uttama sloke. Bhagavati uttama sloke. Bhakti bhavati naistiki. Bhakti bhavati naistiki. In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. And this way, the devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam. And from the devotees. And from the devotees. He becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. He becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. Tadarajas tamo bhava. Tadarajas tamo bhava. Kamalo bodhayas che. Kamalo bodhayas che. Chetetar navidam. Chetetar navidam. Stitvam satve prasiddhati. Stitvam satve prasiddhati. By the development of devotional service. By development of devotional service, <clears throat> one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. One becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. And thus, material lust and avarice are diminished. And thus, material lust and avarice are diminished. Evam prasanna manasu. Evam prasanna manasu. Bhagavat bhakti yoga taha. Bhagavat bhakti yoga taha. Bhagavat tattva vigyanam. Bhagavat tattva vigyanam. Mukta sangasya jayate. Mukta sangasya jayate. By development of devotional service, one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. By developing devotional service, one becomes free from the modes. And thus, material lust. And I'm, like, I'm sorry. When these impurities are wiped away, when these impurities are wiped away, the candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness. The candidate remains steady in his position of pure. Becomes goodness. enlivened by devotional service. Becomes enlivened by devotional service. And understands the science of God perfectly. And understands the science of God perfectly. Vidyate hridaya grantis. Vidyate hridaya grantis. Chidyante sarvasam saya. Chidyante sarvasam saya. Siyante chasya karmani. Siyante chasya karmani. Drista evatmanishwari. Drita evatmanishwari. Thus bhakti yoga serves the hard knot of material affection. Thus the bhakti yoga serves the hard knot of material affection. And enables one to come at once to the stage of a samsayam samagram. And enables one to come at once to the stage of a samsayam samagram. Understanding of the supreme absolute Absolute truth, personality of Godhead. Understanding the supreme absolute truth, personality of Godhead. Therefore, only by hearing from Krishna or from his devotee in Krishna consciousness, Krishna, Krishna consciousness, in Krishna consciousness, can one understand the science of Krishna? Can one understand the science of Krishna? Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 18, Verse Number 20. Eta vatalam nanu suchitena. Eta vatalam nanu suchitena. Eta vatalam nanu suchitena. Eta vatalam nanu suchitena. Gunar asamya natisayanasya. Gunar asamya Translation by Srila Prabhupada. It is now ascertained that he, the personality of Godhead, is unlimited, and there is none equal to him. Consequently, no one can speak of him adequately. Great demigods cannot obtain the favor of the goddess of fortune even by prayers, but this very goddess, 
renders service unto the Lord, although he is unwilling to have such service. <coughs> Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. The Personality Godhead, or the Parameshwara, Param Brahman, according to the Shrutis, has nothing to do. He has no equal, nor does anyone excel him. He has unlimited potencies, and his every action is carried out systematically in his natural and perfect ways. Thus, the Supreme Personality Godhead is full in himself, and he has nothing to accept from anyone else, including the great demigods like Brahma. Others ask for the favor of the goddess of fortune, and despite such prayers, she declines to award such favors. But still she renders service unto the Supreme Personality of Godhead, although he has nothing to accept from her. The Personality of Godhead in his Garbhodakshai Vishnu feature begets Brahma, the first created person in the material world. From his navel, lotus stem, and not in the womb of the goddess of fortune, who is eternally engaged in his service. These are some of the instances of his complete independence and perfection that he has nothing to do does not mean that he is impersonal. He is transcendentally so full of inconceivable potencies that simply by his willing, everything is done without physical or, f or personal endeavor. He is called, therefore, Yogeshwara, or the Lord of all mystic powers. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. So although we hear what's being said here, it's uh, not evident that we really understand it. Because how can we understand something that is inconceivable? So this is a sort of a summary of the inconceivable and mystical uh, opulences of the Lord. First of all, he has unlimited potencies. That right there is inconceivable because we have a limited mind and we have a limited existence in this material body that we identify with. Therefore, to understand that there is someone with inconceivable potencies is inconceivable. Okay. <coughs> because we are limited by the body and attachment to it and the modes of material nature and time and uh, three types of miseries and, and so forth. There's so many things limiting us. How could we understand something that's unlimited? Although our soul is eternal, in a sense, it is unlimited also, but as long as we're baffled or fooled or confused about who we are, as long as we think I am this body, then it's impossible to understand uh, these things about Krishna, although we hear it. We may even memorize it. That still it doesn't mean we understand it. And then when it says his every action is carried out systematically, in his, in his natural and perfect ways. What does that mean? It, it means that it looks like it's automatic, that no one's doing it. Yeah. It looks like that, but it's not like that. Because behind everything is Krishna. Now that right there would be called unscientific today. Because in science, they're teaching you that everything is material. And there's no such thing as some supernatural being behind this creation. That's what they're teaching. That's what this books say. That's what, if, if you challenge them, they get angry and, and, and threaten you, you say. So no one can uh, challenge the scientists. That's if you want to pass your courses. But Srila Prabhupada was challenging them all the time. I once asked him why he was doing that, because I had never heard anyone challenge a scientist and when I was a new devotee. And he said, I can do that. He said, do you know why? And I said, no. He said, because I know Krishna is behind everything. 
I know this, I know this, I know this. Therefore, I can do it. So, he understood, and he understands Krishna. We don't necessarily understand Krishna. We can hear it theoretically, we can repeat the words, but to understand it is something else. Why? Because as long as we have an attachment, even the slightest attachment to the body, we can un we cannot understand that there's someone with inconceivable potencies, and and that that person is not like us. He's not he's not conditioned by the modes of material nature. He's not conditioned by different types of material attachments, family attachments, attachments to uh, acting in the modes of lust, and anger, and so forth. No. We we we're not we we can theoretically mouth the words, but there's no guarantee that we understand them. Then it says, his natural and perfect everything is done systematically in his natural and perfect ways. Well, who do we know that's perfect? We don't know anybody that's perfect, and who do we know that's actually living a natural life? Uh, very few people are living a natural life. We depend on plastic. We depend on so many uh, inorganic chemicals and and different things like that. And, and therefore, we cannot say that we're living a natural life. Natural life means you're eternal, full of bliss and knowledge. Who can say that they're eternal and full of bliss of knowledge? Even though that is our nature, but no one is actually living like that. Someone who knows that they're eternal, full of bliss and knowledge, they would not be working in the material world. They would be working only to spread Krishna consciousness, knowing what that what the goal of life is. So, we're not in a position to understand these words that are being spoken about Krishna, even though we can theoretically understand them. But to realize them is something else, because if you realize it, then you immediately stop what you're doing and just take up Krishna consciousness fully. <clears throat> There's an example of this in the Bible. I mean, you have uh, Saul, S-A-U-L. He was a Jew who hated Christians. And his job was persecuting Christians. And one time he had to go from Jerusalem to uh uh, Syria to to uh, persecute Jews who had converted to Christianity. But on the way, Jesus appeared to him. This is about 60 years or so after the crucifixion of Jesus. And when he saw Jesus, he was overwhelmed and he gave up being Saul and he became Paul, the most, let's say, successful preacher of Christianity. Well, it's just like Arjuna, when he, when he not, not that he wanted to, but he asked to see the universal form uh, in, in order to have a criterion in the future, like today, to debunk anyone who claims that they are Krishna. So, but when he saw the universal form, he was overwhelmed completely, and he completely uh, although he had already surrendered, but now is absolutely sure after seeing the universal form. So that means, what did he see? He saw some, He saw the inconceivable power of the Lord. And it was no longer theoretical. He actually saw it. He actually experienced it. And it was too much for him. And he begged the Lord to return back to his, his two-armed form, that at least he could deal with that. He couldn't deal with the universal form. It was just bewildering. So when Krishna manifests even a little portion of his inconceivable energies, people get become confused because of our limitation of the body and bodily identification. So uh, therefore, the Supreme Personality of God is full in himself, and he has nothing to accept from anyone else, including the great demigods like Brahma. Others ask for the favor of the goddess of fortune, and despite such prayers, she declines to award such favors. But still she renders service unto the Supreme Personality of Godhead, although he has nothing to accept from her. Yeah, to prove that, 
He doesn't need her to produce Brahma. Uh, he does it by himself. He doesn't need to connect with her. And, and what's interesting here is a statement which says that others ask for the favor of the goddess of fortune, and despite such prayers, she declines to award such favors. Now, why is that? Why would she decline to award such favors? Because she's not a demigod. She is the eternal consort of Krishna. So therefore, she's not going to give someone uh, something that's negative for their spiritual life. You see? Uh, that's why people say, well, you know, I, I want to get rich. And someone says, well, don't go to Krishna. Uh, why not? Well, uh, he won't give you something material like that. You should go to uh, Devi, uh, uh, Durga, or Ganapati. <clears throat> so, yeah, if you go to demigods, what can they give you? Actually, they can't give you anything either. They can only give you up to the limit of what your karma is. They can't go beyond that. People think that they're going to get something extra by appeasing the demigods. And... Uh, Lakshmi Devi, she won't give you anything. Why? Because then she will not give you anything that's negative for your spiritual life. So these material desires uh, cannot be satisfied, actually, uh, unless uh, one has, unless one goes to Krishna. He can, he can satisfy any desire, material or spiritual. And whatever... Uh, people receive from the demigods it's because they received it first from Krishna. He permitted it and then they can give it to the living entities. But still she renders service unto the Supreme Personality God Godhead although he has nothing to accept from her. The Personality Godhead in his Garbhadakshaya Vishnu feature begets Brahma, the first created person in the material world from his navel lotus stem, and not in the womb of the goddess of fortune, who is eternally engaged in his service. These are some of the instances of his complete independence and perfection. That he has nothing to do does not mean that he is impersonal. He is transcendentally so full of inconceivable potencies that simply by his willing, everything is done without physical or personal endeavor. He is called, therefore, Yogeshwara, or the Lord of all mystic powers. So how can we understand such a thing? Uh, the only thing we can do is under, uh, understand that the supreme goal of our life should be to surrender to Lord Krishna. If we don't surrender to Lord Krishna, we still have to surrender. But it will be to Maya, or some fool that claims that they're God. So surrender is, is the position of the living entity. Jivera Swarupahaya Krishna Nitya Das. So we are Nitya Das. That's our eternal identity, to be a servant. And that means you surrender to someone. So if you don't surrender to Krishna, you surrender to Maya. <clears throat> Therefore, we should at least understand that rather than ser serve Maya, we should serve Krishna because we'll get eternal benefit from that. Now, all of this philosophy is very difficult to understand. Therefore, Lord Chaitanya came and made it very simple. And, and this is his, uh, that's why he's the most munificent or most uh, generous uh, uh, incarnation of the Lord. So, what did he do exactly? And this is explained in a very nice way in the, in the the uh, renunciation through wisdom. Prabhupada says, by studying the Vedas, the Vedanta Sutra and the Upanishads, one may find processes for purifying the consciousness and elevating oneself to the transcendental platform. But for the conditioned souls of Kali Yuga, such means are beyond reach. In other words, you can try, but you won't succeed simply by reading the Vedas or the Vedanta Sutra, which is part of, which is a Vedic scripture, or the Upanishads, which is also a Vedic scripture. Well, 
Lord Chaitanya alone can liberate the conditioned souls of this age. In his younger days, Lord Chaitanya was known as Nimai Pandita because he was an erudite scholar. Indeed, he became famous as the master of logic. Yet, for the sake of the jivas, afflicted by the Kali Yuga, he presented himself as illiterate. Such pastimes are possible only for the Supreme Lord. When the famous Mayavadi Sanyasi Prakasananda Saraswati met Lord Chaitanya in Benares, he spoke as follows to the Lord. I see you as a sannyasi, yet you are in the company of sentimentalists, and like them, you are dancing and singing. The real business of sannyasis is to study the Vedas and meditate on Brahman. But you have rejected these duties and are acting like a sentimentalist. I'm impressed with your effulgent form, which resembles that of Lord Narayana himself. But why do you act below your status? The Prabhupada writes, the Mayavadi sannyasi study the Vedas simply to gain liberation. Lord Chaitanya did not advent merely to teach such an insignificant goal. He propagated the congregational chanting of the holy name and the scientific method of devotional service. His main, main aim was to establish the authorized religious principle for this age, Sankirtana, and thereby liberate all living entities. His reply to Prakasananda Saraswati was very simple, as if coming from an ordinary mortal. The Lord said, Respected Swamiji, please listen to the reason why I act as I do. My guru saw that I was ignorant. And so he instructed me as follows. You are foolish and have no proper understanding of Vedanta philosophy. So simply chant this Hare Krishna mantra, which is the essence of all mantras. This mantra will deliver you from the entanglement of material existence and award you the shelter of Krishna's lotus feet. In the age of Kali, there is no religious principle except, except chanting Krishna's name. It has been ascertained from all the scriptures that Krishna's holy name is the essence of all mantras. He then made me learn a verse, which I will repeat to you for your consideration. This is Lord Chaitanya speaking to Pakasananda Saraswati. Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Hare Nameva Kevalam. Kalo nastyeva 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 gatiranyata. If one wants to make spiritual progress in this age of Kali, there is no alternative. There is no alternative. There is no alternative to the holy name, the holy name, the holy name of the Lord. So Prabhupada writes, by chanting Krishna's holy name, one cleanses all the dust from the mirror of one's consciousness. The blazing fire of material existence is then extinguished. This fire is especially severe in the, in the present materialistic civilization, which is full of conflict, the hallmark of Kali Yuga. But extinguishing the fire of material existence is far from the final result of chanting. Indeed, it is only a preliminary con con consequence Gradually, the knowledge that love of Godhead is the absolute necessity of life becomes clearer. The dark well of ignorance is lifted, and one gets a glimpse of absolute knowledge. As the devotee realizes this transcendental knowledge, he feels ever-increasing spiritual ecstasy overwhelming his heart. This spiritual joy expands at every moment, let the all auspicious chanting of the holy name of Krishna be ever victorious. Now, this is like a paraphrase of the first uh, mantra of the uh, Shikshastakam. Those who seek the smaller values of life and thus take up yoga for selfish motives are not very noble. And even if they achieve success, they still remain inferior. But those who practice yoga for the benefit of others are truly worthy, for even if they personally do not attain perfection, they are very elevated souls. 
Devotees of the Lord practice the yoga called Buddhi Yoga, or Krishna Consciousness. This yoga is meant to bless all humanity, as well as bring the practitioner to the perfection of life. The Srimad Bhagavatam 1.5.17 aptly describes the great value of such yoga. One who has forsaken this, his material occupations to engage in the devotional service of the Lord may sometimes fall down while in an immature stage, yet there is no danger of his being unsuccessful. On the other hand, a non-devotee, though fully engaged in occupational duties, does not gain anything. So these are very eloquent words by Srila Prabhupada, and of course he's backing it up with Shastrik evidence. And basically he's making a very, uh, let's say, urgent appeal to uh, everybody in this world to understand the difference between academic knowledge and real realization of knowledge. Academic knowledge is you study Vedanta, you study the Vedas, you can quote many verses, and you can give so many explanations, and most people don't understand any of it. And, uh, and you can fool yourself and fool others that you know something. But the real knowledge is not academic. The real knowledge is practical action in Krishna consciousness. That is real knowledge. So if someone is always chanting Hare Krishna, meaning they're always remembering the Lord and always engaging in devotional service, and basically at one point have given up everything else except their service to the Lord, that means that they have real knowledge. That means they've attained the, the perfection of knowledge. So, and this is explained also uh, in the Vedic literatures, where it is said, let a second, let me just find that verse. Atakshi Krishna Nama Adi, Nabavid Graham Indriyai, Sevan Mukhe Hi Jiva Do Swayam Eva Sparat Yada. No one can understand the transcendental nature of the name, form, quality, and pastimes of Sri Krishna through his materially contaminated senses. Only when one becomes spiritually saturated by transcendental service to the Lord are the transcendental name, form, quality, and pastimes of the Lord revealed to him. So, that just shows us that it's only through devotional service, no other means, not through uh, academic studies. You can get a PhD in Sanskrit, PhD in Southeast Asian philosophy, and still understand nothing, zero, nada, about Krishna. Although you can explain so many things, you can explain all the different meanings of different Sanskrit words, and understand the grammar, and still not understand what is the goal of knowledge. Unless one is actually engaged in unadulterated, pure devotional service, one has not understood the philosophy of, uh, taught by Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita and the Srimad Bhagavatam. Okay, so these are a few points. Are there any questions? No question. Oh yes, uh, or just, comments. Just a comment, yeah. Yeah, it, it is well said that you know, uh, without the sweet will of the Lord Himself, nobody can understand Him. Yeah. And um, uh, the, I like. This. We all know the story of Sarvabhuma Tachar and Lord Chaitanya. 
very, very nice, you know. Yeah. When uh, <coughs> Gopinath, Gopinath Acharya was a great devotee of the Lord, he happened to be uh, the brother-in-law of Sarvamabhata Acharya. And then he could understand that Lord Chaitanya was supreme person of God in himself. But Sarvamabhata Acharya, though great learned scholar, you know, uh, he couldn't. So, and then Gopinath Acharya, when you receive his mercy, then you can understand him. And he quote very nice verse from Bhagavatam, Atapite Deva Padambhujadvai, Prashara Risan, Grita Hivai. It's at least spoken by Lord Brahma. Yeah, you have to have the mercy of the Lord. Yeah, yeah. only a little bit of mercy of him. Atapi Deva. Padambhujadvaya, Prasada Alisanu. Because in some situation, Brahma could understand Krishna and Vrindavan. So he tested Krishna. So after he got mercy of Lord Krishna, and then he put so many prayers, and this one of the prayers. Yes. Yeah. Janati my Lord, if one is favored by even a slight trace of the mercy of your lotus feet, he can understand the greatness of your personality. Right. But those who speculate to understand the Supreme Personality of Godhead are unable to know you even though they continue to study the Vedas for many years. Any purport about Prabhupada? Huh? About the purport, Prabhupada says, one cannot understand the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna, or his form, quality, or name simply by mental speculation or by discussing Vedic literature. One must understand him by devotional service. When one is fully engaged in Krishna consciousness, beginning by chanting the Maha Mantra, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Then only can one understand the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Non devotee impersonalists think that Krishna has a body made of this material nature and that all his activities, his form, and everything are Maya. These impersonalists are known as Mayavadis. They do not know the ultimate truth. Hare Bo. So one has to come to the platform of devotional service. But not simply by academic study, mm. by practical action in Krishna consciousness or devotional service with the help of a bona fide devotees to make sure that what you're doing is actually acceptable by Krishna and, and Prabhupada. So the, the people that overemphasize study in a sense that of learning academic knowledge, uh, they themselves should go out regularly on Sankirtan and give an example of what is the, the goal of the knowledge. Without doing that and just being a bookworm, they, uh, in the end they get confused because uh, they themselves are not practicing the highest perfection of life. What is that? We just read it. It's Harinam Sankirtan. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. Someone wanted to remind us that uh, uh, Vyasadev had an emptiness before he wrote the uh, Srimad Bhagavatam or wrote it down as proof of what you're talking about. Well, because he did not describe Krishna, he wrote so many things. Basically, it looked like he was recommending the Varnashram system as the highest perfection of life. But there's something much higher than the Varnashram system. Uh, the Varnashram system is for gradual elevation to the mode of goodness and eventually to Krishna consciousness. But Krishna consciousness is transcendental to the modes of material nature. And it's all about developing pure love and devotion for Krishna in, in the sense of the gopis and great devotees of the Lord. So uh, the, uh, and so Vyasadeva then wrote the Srimad Bhagavatam where he did not bury 
knowledge of Krishna and, and transcendental bliss uh, in uh, embedded in you know mountains of explanations of uh, uh, how to deal with this body and psychological effects and and the modes of material nature and so forth. So this is also explained uh, very nicely uh, in this in this book uh, where the uh, Brahma Pucham, the five levels of consciousness are explained. And it says, there are various stages of elevation the jiva goes through, which are like different shells. The Sanskrit word for those shells is koshas, covering him. They are the coverings of food, anamaya, life air, pranamaya, mind, manamaya or jnanamaya, and transcendental knowledge, vijnanamaya. When the final shell is penetrated, the soul attains pure consciousness, enters a state of complete bliss, anandamaya, and experiences satchit ananda as universal. First, the soul has covered consciousness, then he reaches the stage of budding consciousness, then blossoming consciousness, and finally fully blossomed consciousness. And all the while, he experiences a gradual expansion of bliss, but only in relation to Lord Krishna and his devotional service. At the final stage, flowers, fruits, plants, trees, clay, all objects and elements become spiritualized by being used in Lord Krishna's service. In other words, nothing is seen to be separate from the Lord. As the Isha Upanishad explains, Ishavaisham idam sarvam, everything animate or inanimate that is within this universe is controlled and owned by the Lord. To see God everywhere and in every living entity is not the final word in self-realization. One needs to see him in all events, in every activity, in every thought, influencing everyone's life, including one's own. Two things are indispensable for acquiring such vision. First, we must offer the results of all our activities to Lord Krishna. And second, every action we perform must be done exclusively as devotional service to him. We must constantly meditate on the fact that Lord Krishna is the only enjoyer and proprietor of every action. So this is, this is actually real uh, understanding. And so we see that even Vijnana Moya, or uh, the, the state of complete, uh, where it says uh, transcendental knowledge, which is Vijnana Moya, that is also a covering, in a sense. One has to smash through that. When the final shell is penetrated, the soul attains pure consciousness, enters the state of complete bliss, anandamaya, and experiences, experiences such a tananda as universal. <clears throat> so we see that, uh, actually all of us are still neophyte devotees. We have a long way to go. But that way is full of bliss, and the bliss keeps increasing as we advance. Alibo. But I, I just, because you mentioned about the five levels of consciousness, uh, Anamaya, Pranamaya, Manamaya, and Vigyanamaya. Vigyanamaya. Is a, and Anandamaya. Right. Is it the same? Is it the, is it the same? that mentioned by Bhaktivinoda Thakur about he calls it uh, five level of consciousness, uh, abruta chaitanya, means fully covered, and then... Well, that, those are called koshas, coverings. Right, but in Sanskrit he, he, he uses uh, um, abru, abruta, fully covered, and then shrunk chaitanya, Shrunkachita means uh, shrunken consciousness. And then he said that those two first levels of consciousness are for the other eight million species of life. They belong to these two categories. And then the last three for the human being, which you, just mentioned, you mentioned, 
called Boarding Consciousness, or Mukulita. Pranamaya. Yeah, okay. Perceiving the living symptoms. That's from a human form of life. Yeah. And then, and then, and then when, when it's, it's, and then above that is uh, blossom. Yeah. You give me something like a flower, right? Vigyanamaya, yeah. And you develop transcendental knowledge. Yeah, and then fully blossom. Anandamaya. Krishna consciousness, by Yeah. So the same, same thing, actually. Same. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. It's called Brahma Pucham. Uh, okay. Five levels of consciousness. Okay, all glories to Prabhupada. Thank you very much. Srimad Bhagavatam, Gantara Ajiki, Jay, Srila Prabhupada, Ki, Jay. Haribo, Haribo, Haribo.